Welcome back to IMS War Coding Solutions. Today we are going to go over the Titan 2M. We are going to be adding toolpath to this solid model. You can find these prints and models over at Titans of CNC Academy. Um, this is just something that I used as a practice before opening my own business. So today we're going to talk about this Titan 2M. We're going to discuss what kind of toolpath we're going to use. How we're going to use it we're going to walk through the part setup and i'm going to cam this part on this video from start to finish both sides so we're not only going to do the top profile but we're also going to turn the part over and we're actually going to deck off the back side what we call hatting off the part so the first thing you want to do is you want to set up your part so when we look at machining a part we look at well how am i going to hold this part this part is pretty straightforward it's a rectangle we're going to use a vise so we're going to use a corner or center. Now for me, I like to use the back left corner. Now it's just a personal preference. There's some arguments saying, oh, well, back left ain't right. You're to use the back right. Uh, you're to always come off center. I don't care what you do. As long as you don't use a front point where the movable jaw is. Uh, movable jaws uh, is not the best place to locate a part. It's movable. So after we've got our decision on where we're going to come off with our edge finder or indicator or whatever you're going to use then we're going to come over here to stock now for me I'm going to use a fixed box this material I would have sold 125 thousandths too long I would use one by two material right here where it says model position right now we are sitting in the middle of our stock we want to make sure we're only 10 thousandths off this top edge. We do that by doing offset from top Z plus, offset of 0 .01. And you'll see the stock push down. Sanity check is down here to make sure all your stock sizes are right. Once that's done, you can click OK. So there's our model. Now, when you're talking about machining a part, typically you want to face, rough, finish profile and then drill tap chamfer ream everything uh, in a drilling scenario or a vertical scenario last unless you're trying to get rid of the swirly tool path that chips can make on the top of a, top of a part then you may want to do a rough face and a finish face but for what we're doing this part isn't critical we're not trying to hold any certain dimensions just a industry standard plus or minus five thousandths uh, plus or minus five thousandths again on flatness perpendicular and parallelism so you know when you're looking at five thousandths industry standard that's pretty wide open on a two watt part so at this point we want to face the part we're going to do this by selecting face your tile over here will pop up the tool we're going to use the tool i'm going to use anyway is a three inch face mill the 31 thousandths radius tool tip we're going to click ok now, I like on a face mill for it to come straight down, go across the part, pick up, and go home. I don't like any fancy stuff. I don't like lead in, lead out. The face mill is typically the biggest thing in the machine. So you don't want to play around with that tool. You don't want to really get fancy with it. You want to bring it in, get the job done, and get it back out of the way. So I like turning lead in and lead out off. At this point, I want to go to passes and pass extension. What we want to do is we want to make sure we are off the part. So typically, it's a three inch face mill in my case. So I would want to do an inch and a half plus some room. So 1.550, that's a half inch plus 50 thousandths. It's just my preference, it's what I like to use. At this point, there's nothing else that you need to do. You just have to click OK. The software is smart enough to realize this is the top of the part. The software is smart enough to know where the stock is because you've defined it. So by clicking OK, you tell it I want it to process. Here's the face mill. It's going to come straight down, walk straight across the part, and pick up. For those that ain't familiar with Fusion, yellow is a rapid 2, green is a feed 2 or a secondary plane, and then blue is the actual feed motion, and then yellow rapid away again. So now... And I'll simulate that for you. That way you get a, get a good feel for it. There you go. Just going to walk straight across the part and pick up. Now, the next thing that I want to do, like I said, we want to face, then rough. 
So roughing to me on just about everything that I do anymore is adaptive. Adaptive, high speed machining, whatever you know it by, right here it is, 2D adaptive. So I'm gonna click that. I am gonna change my tool. Now this is a one inch slot here. So I'm gonna choose a half inch end mill and I'm gonna click okay. I'm going to go into linking and change a few things. Now these are my preferences. Uh, as you get more familiar with Fusion, you learn what things do, you'll develop your own type of preferences. But for me, things that I always change is the stay down level, I change that to 90%. Then I typically come down here, if I'm gonna helix into a bore, in aluminum with the machines that we have, I like one and a half degrees. Um, and I'll back that down to one inch if I'm in, oh, not one inch, one degree if I'm in steel. There again, my preferences for the machines that we run. After that, I'll go to passes. And a little backstory, um, to stock to leave is anywhere between five and 50,000, depending on what you're doing and how much push off you can get. This being aluminum, we're gonna do one, uh, we're gonna do 10,000s. I'm gonna turn smoothing on. We're running Haas Mills, and for what we do, uh, we have found out that 1,000 smoothing works phenomenally for what we do. Also, um, between adaptive clearing, high speed machine, or, you know, whatever you know it as, um, you need to figure out what your machine is capable of handling from a load standpoint. Because when we talk about optimum load right here, we're talking about how much sidewall our machine can take in a given scenario. So in this scenario, this is a 3 8 deep pocket with a half inch end mill in 6061 T6511 material. So we wanna know how much sidewall we can take on a given horsepower machine. Uh, there is an actual K factor that you can figure in there and figure out your horsepower. Uh, then come back and put your load in there and figure out where you stand in that. For us at the shop, we do like to change this optimum load to a hundred thousandths. Uh, we don't like to beat the machines up, so hundred thousandths is pretty much where we're at on that. After we've changed our optimum load and our stock to leave, we're done. Oh, don't forget to change your smoothing. That's the one I always forget to do. After that, only thing we have to do is click OK. We never did select our geometry. I'm bad about that. So we want to select the bottom of the part because we want to rough the corners out. Then we want to select the two slots. Once that's selected, then you click OK. And there is our 2D toolpath. 2D adaptive clearing, 2D high speed machining, whatever you know it as. So now at this point, I've faced it, I've roughed it, now I want to come back and finish it. So I'm going to use 2D Contour. Same tool. There again, for our 6061-6511 material, uh, the same tool is going to work just fine unless you've got some kind of galling issue. So I'm going to go ahead and select my geometry first, that way I don't forget. I'm going to select the bottom of the part. I'm going to zoom in and show you something that we've noticed over time. See how it wants to select these two separately? select this radius then this line and then for some reason it will select the other radius automatically and now over here it wants to select both of them together I don't know why fusion does this but it does so we end up uh, having to swivel around the part a little bit to uh, get everything selected but it's all good we don't mind taking a few extra seconds now that we've got all of, all of our uh, 2D contour path done. So you should have all, I guess, five of these lines selected. At that point, there's nothing to change. There's nothing to change in linking, nothing to change in passes. The heights, we haven't changed heights at all yet because that's not something that we need for this particular instance. Uh, geometry or, or these nine chains or five different lines. The tool is the same tool, so we just click OK and we come in and we finish the part. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. At this point, we need to drill the holes and chamfer the part. So the way I like to do holes when any given time possible is hole recognition. So I'm gonna click hole recognition and you'll see you get a bunch of stuff that pops up. 
I want the one that's actually right. So this spot drill, drill, and tap right here. I want to make sure my tap type is set at quarter 20 and click it. Okay. Excuse me there. So with hole recognition, it's going to recognize where the holes are on our part. We've selected the holes that we wanted. Now it's going to look inside my tool library and find the tools that best suit the job. Now, I have noticed that for whatever reason, uh, it never selects my spot drill right. Probably me, probably not the software, but it always wants to pull up a six millimeter, 90 degree spot drill. Now what I do is I always go in and edit that tool to something that I actually have on stock. And for us, it's pretty much always a half inch chamfer mill or half inch 90 degree uh, end mill. It's a half inch tip. Ooh, that's a little big. Half inch tip by half inch shank. Click OK. Yes, I want to keep the feeds and speeds. And then I'm going to regenerate the entire program mostly because I can. I have the time. I might as well. So at this point, you can see our massive chamfer mill. And you can also see our drill profile and our tap profile. So now the only thing we got left to do is chamfer the part. So we're going to come up here to 2D contour. Another benefit is uh, editing that tool is I can come back and select it. See, there it is. Click OK. Come into passes. Make sure chamfer is selected. We do want to go to our geometry tab and select the three chamfers we would like. Oops, not that one. Select the three chamfers we do want to put on our part. And then go into passes. And let's talk about chamfer tip width. Chamfer tip width is how much you want the tip of the tool to be offset from the tip. Uh, because if you don't, what you're actually going to do, this tip will actually be lined up with this line and walk around the part. Uh, that's going to be a problem for tool wear. Uh, the tip of these 90 degree end mills or chamfer mills are very fragile, very delicate uh, compared to the rest of the tool, right? So with a half inch 90 degree chamfer mill, each side, each cutting length of that tool is a little over 250 thousandths of an inch. So what we want to do is be close to the middle of that as actually possible. So half of 250 is easily 125. So I'm going to come here to chamfer tip width and type point 125. Now that's the only thing I have to change. Once that's changed, I click OK. It's going to walk around the part and do all my chamfers for me. So now I'm going to simulate this entire toolpath. There's the face mill going across. Let me cut my model off so you can see the actual 3D path. Um, I get asked quite a bit what graphics card I use for Fusion. Um, you know, best bang for the buck, right? I use a Zotac 1660 Ti if you're curious. That's just what I use for Fusion and modeling. Um, it doesn't take a very strong computer, obviously, to run Fusion. It's a pretty simple software computer-wise speed this up a little bit don't don't want, don't want to keep here all day so there was the adaptive there's the finish and then drill chamfer tap and then walk around the part and put our chamfer zone so everything looks fine I will always zoom in because that purple is very hard to see from up here so I always zoom in and make sure I still have a chamfer there um, you know you don't want to machine apart just to figure out that you left a, a two cent chamfer off of it right that would be terrible so at this point we validate that our solid is what we actually want if it's not what you want then uh, play with it till you do get what you want At this point I'll close this out I will turn our model back on I'm gonna roll our part over and I want to select setup because now I have to do the backside right so at this point I'm going to same back left corner I'm pretty consistent on this. I'm going to go to stock, fix box size. Our size is 5 by 1.950. We are still dealing with 1 inch material, but our offset from Z is 240 thousandths this time. That's the quarter inch minus the 10 thousandths face that we took. Now, in a perfect world, 240 would be right, but 
it does happen to where you take one or two thousandths more or even five or ten thousandths more than you originally intended. This would have to be adjusted at the machine to get the correct thickness. So now what we would want to do is sanity check 5 by 1.95 by 1 inch and click OK. So at this point there's only one operation to do. We come in with our face mill by clicking face, select our 3 inch face mill. I do want to turn multi-depth on. This option is under passes and we'll change this to 50 thousandths depth of cut. That's a couple reasons. One, I'm, I don't want to take a 240,000th depth of cut in one shot. That's kind of silly to do that with the speeds that we have on the machines anymore. That there's no reason to do that to a small 30 horsepower machine. So when that's 50,000 is on, the only thing we have to do, again, is go to linking, turn our lead in and lead out off, go back to passes, and type 1.550. Now, if I was you, I wouldn't go back and forth three times like I do. I've been doing it that way for years. And once you develop that habit, it does not go away for some reason. So now uh, we're done. We just have to click OK. We see our passes. Now you'll notice the passes when I simulate this. It actually feeds across. Then it's going to plunge down and go back across. Then it's going to plunge down and go back across. If you're not okay with that, you can go into the settings and change that. I'll show you where that's at. Is it? It's in passes and both ways. You can climb conventional. Obviously, we're on a CNC, so we're gonna want to climb mill. And I always leave both ways on on a face mill. Uh, it doesn't generally affect what I'm doing. That's why I leave it on. So we do appreciate you watching. Uh, please uh, remember to like and subscribe and to tune in for more videos. Thank you and have a good day.